He said, I will be in the lead plane on every mission. Any plane that takes off will go over the target or the crew will be court-martialed. The abort rate dropped overnight. Now that's the kind of a commander he was. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. My friends, on this Christmas Eve, there are over 10 million men in the armed forces of the United States alone. One year ago, 1,700,000 were serving overseas. By next July 1st, that number will rise to over 5 million. Plenty of bad news for the Japs in the not too far distant future. The U.S. Air Force had a new airplane named the B-29. The B-17s and B-24s in Europe bombed from 15, 16,000 feet. The problem was that they were subject to anti-aircraft fire and to fighter aircraft. To relieve that, this B-29 was being developed, it bombed from high altitude, and it was thought we could destroy targets much more efficiently and effectively. I was brought back from the 8th Air Force and assigned to the first B-29s, the 58th bomb wing. We had to fly those planes from the bases in Kansas to India. Then we had to fly fuel over the hump into China. The airfields were built with Chinese labor. It was an insane operation. I can still remember hauling these huge rollers to crush the stone, make them flat. Long rope, somebody had slipped, the roller would roll over and everybody would laugh and go on. We were supposed to take these B-29s, there were no tanker aircraft, and we were to fill them with fuel fly from India to Chengdu, offload the fuel, fly back to India, make enough missions to build up fuel in Chengdu, fly to Iwata, Japan, bomb the steel mills, and go back to India. We had so little training on this problem of maximizing efficiency, we actually found to get some of the B-29s back, instead of offloading fuel, they had to take it on. To make a long story short, it wasn't worth a damn. And it was LeMay who really came to that conclusion and led the chiefs to move the whole thing to the Marianas, which devastated Japan. was focused on only one thing, target destruction. Most Air Force generals could tell you how many planes they had, how many tons of bombs they dropped, or whatever the hell it was, but he was the only person that I knew in the senior command of the Air Force who focused solely on the loss of his crews per unit of target destruction.
I was on the island of Guam, in his command, in March of 1945. In that single night, we burned to death 100,000 Japanese civilians in Tokyo, men, women, and children. Were you aware this was going to happen? Well, I was, I was part of a mechanism that, that in a sense recommended it. I analyzed bombing operations and how to make them more efficient, i.e., not more efficient in the sense of killing more, but more efficient in, in weakening the adversary. I wrote one report analyzing the efficiency of the B-29 operations. The B-29 could get above the fighter aircraft and above the air defense, so the loss rate would be much less. The problem was, the accuracy was also much less. Now, I don't want to suggest that it was my report that led to, I'll call it the firebombing. It isn't that I'm trying to absolve myself of blame for the firebombing. I don't want to suggest that it was I that put in LeMay's mind that his operations were totally inefficient and had to be drastically changed. But anyhow, that's what he did. He took the B-29s down to 5,000 feet, and he decided to bomb with fire bombs. I participated in the interrogation of the B-29 bomber crews that came back that night. A room full of crewmen and, and, and intelligence uh, interrogators. The captain got up, young captain, and said, God damn it, I'd like to know who this son of a bitch was that took this magnificent airplane designed to bomb from 23,000 feet, and he took it down to 5,000 feet, and I lost my wingman. He was shot and killed. LeMay spoke in monosyllables. I never heard him say more than uh, two words in sequence. It was basically, yes, no, yep. That's all the hell with it. That was all he said. And LeMay was totally intolerant of criticism. He never engaged in discussion with anybody. He stood up. Why are we here? Why are we here? You lost your wingman. It hurts me as much as it does you. I sent him there. And I've been there. I know what it is. But you lost one wingman, and we destroyed Tokyo. Fifty square miles of Tokyo were burned. Tokyo was a wooden city, and when we dropped these firebombs, and it just burned it. The choice of incendiary bombs, where did that come from? I think the, the, the issue is not so much incendiary bombs. I think the issue is 
in order to win a war, should you kill 100,000 people in one night by firebombing or any other way? LeMay's answer would be clearly yes. McNamara, do you mean to say that instead of killing 100,000, burning to death 100,000 Japanese civilians in that one night, we should have burned to death a lesser number or none, and then had our soldiers cross the beaches in Tokyo and been slaughtered in the tens of thousands? Is that what you're proposing? Is that moral? Is that wise? Why was it necessary to drop the nuclear bomb if LeMay was burning up Japan? And he went on from, from Tokyo to firebomb other cities. 58% of Yokohama, Yokohama is roughly the size of Cleveland. 58% of Cleveland destroyed. Tokyo is roughly the size of New York. 51% of New York destroyed. 99% of the equivalent of Chattanooga, which was Toyama. 40% of the equivalent of Los Angeles, which was Nagoya. This was all done before the dropping of the nuclear bomb, which, by the way, was dropped by LeMay's command. Proportionality should be a guideline in war. Killing 50 to 90 percent of the people of 67 Japanese cities and then bombing them with two nuclear bombs is not proportional, in the minds of some people, to the objectives we were trying to achieve. I don't fault Truman for dropping the nuclear bomb. The U.S.-Japanese War was one of the most brutal wars in all of human history. Kamikaze pilots, suicide, unbelievable. What one can criticize is that the human race prior to that time, and today, has not really grappled with what are, I'll call it the rules of war. Was there a rule then that said you shouldn't bomb, uh, shouldn't kill, shouldn't burn to death 100,000 civilians in a night? LeMay said, if we'd lost the war, we'd all have been prosecuted as war criminals. And I think he's right. He and I'd say I were behaving as war criminals. LeMay recognized that what he was doing would be thought immoral if his side had lost. Well, what makes it immoral if you lose and not immoral if you win? I want you to dictate to me a uh, memorandum, a couple of pages, uh, four letter words and short sentences on uh, the situation in Vietnam, the Vietnam picture. This morning, Senator Scott said uh, that the war which we can neither win, lose, nor drop is evidence of an instability of ideas, a floating series of judgments our policy of nervous conciliation, which is extremely disturbing. Do you think it's a mistake to explain about Vietnam and what we're faced with? Well, I, I do think, Mr. President, that it'd be wise for you to say as little as possible. I, the, the, the frank answer is we don't know what's going on out there. The, uh, the signs I see coming through the cables are, are disturbing signs.